Hi, it's Miss Kelly the CODA here. CODA stands for Certi Certified Occupational Therapy Assistant. I know the assistant part might throw you off, but I did go to college and I do have an, a degree. So I wanted to talk about some fine motor activities that you can do at home with just things that you might have laying around the house. Um, you might want to grab a notepad and just jot down all the ideas that really talk to you about like what your kid would like to do and also what materials you already have because I don't want you to have to go out and spend a whole bunch of money. Uh, I would like to start out with just talking about a few different grasps that children use. So when they're really young, they use their whole hand to grab something like a raking grasp or a gross grasp to grab stuff off the table and then developmentally what kind of happens is we go from the outside of the hand in and they start to use just like these three fingers to grasp things and to hold things. And what that does is it helps us get ready for uh, to hold a pencil, honestly. Like these three fingers, when they come together, it's called a tripod grasp, and that's what we use to hold our pencils. And you can also developmentally get to a pincer grasp as well. So these are the grasps that we wanna get to with these activities. So what I'm gonna start with is Play-Doh. Play-Doh is an awesome activity to work on hand strength and finger strength and finger dexterity and all those good things. Of course, you can roll it into a ball and you can roll it into a snake, same old, same old, like we've done our whole lives, right? A couple of activities that are a little bit more advanced is you can have the kid pinch off little sections of it so they're getting that pincer grasp. You can have them take these little teeny pieces and roll them into balls and I like to call them like dinosaur eggs or unicorn eggs or something. So make a whole bunch of unicorn eggs and then when they have their eggs all put together, then they can pinch them like this and smash them. And you can even have them pinch them with different fingers and take turns with every single finger in between the thumb and the finger. And that is actually really hard for some kids to do. Um, let's see what else. I did make a list because I don't want to forget anything. Oh, even flattening it on the table or using the little rollers is really good for hand strength. And look, I'm even using my arm and my elbow and my shoulder and my whole body is leaning into this. So it's even good to just have them play with it and um, stick with like cookie cutters and stuff like that, just the same way we used to. Another fun activity that I like to do with Play-Doh is to stick things in it. So you can give them spaghetti or pipe cleaners or whatever else. You can make a little monster with eyeballs or anything like that. And that kind of helps them with their hand strength and finger strength as well. All right, I'll put the Play-Doh away. Let's talk about lacing. So you can make things at home that you can use for lacing. I made a paper plate for you today and I just punched holes around the edge and you can even have the kid help you punch holes because hand strength, hello. I had an old shoelace that I used for lacing because it already has the aglet on the end so it won't get frayed. Sometimes you can use yarn or string or whatever and you just want to put glue on the end or burn the end a little bit so that it doesn't fray as much. But that's an easy one. And any piece of paper you can just punch some holes into and have the kids string lace through it. Another lacing activity is to use a colander with pipe cleaners. And you can cut them a little bit shorter than this. This one's way long, but the kid has to poke it through the holes and just have a whole bunch of pipe cleaners sticking out all around your colander. And you can call it some fuzzy, crazy creature or something like that. Um, that leads me to threading beads and things like that. So I have yarn here. Yarn is obviously going to be one of the harder things for a kid to put a bead onto because it just moves around a lot. I went ahead and like tied, I don't know if you can even see it, I tied a bead to the end of it so that they have a stopping point and a starting point. Um, an easier thing to thread is a pipe cleaner. I did the same thing. I wrapped a bead at the end so that they just have an ending point and they can just put it on and slide it all the way to the end. And this is actually also working on bilateral coordination using both hands doing different tasks at the same time. 
another thing that we can lace onto pipe cleaners is a little noodle. And so this is a little bit easier for the younger kiddos that can't grasp the little beads. And of course it's not going all the way through. <laughs> so obviously bigger noodles will work a little bit better, but you can do lots with those too. Let's see, what else do I have for lacing? I think that's it. Okay, another fun thing that I have, that I kind of made to do with beads is I have this little bead container and I just found some cookie cutters and the kids can put the cookie cutters down on the table and then they fish out the beads. And what I did when I did this activity is I had them choose the bead that matched the color of their cookie cutter, but you don't have to do that. If the kids are too young to get colors, then that's okay. So they have to find the right bead. And obviously I'm using my pincer fingers to fill up the puppy dog cookie cutter until it's all the way full of beads. <laughs> it's obviously going to work better when it's flat on the table, but I wanted you to see what I was doing. All right. Shoelace noodle, make sure that I'm doing everything. Another activity that helps your pincer grasp is called Q-tip painting. I didn't bring an example, but you can have the kids hold on to the Q-tip and just dip it in the paint and then they can make dots on their paper. And you can do that with any different activities. Actually, if you go to Pinterest and type in Q-tip painting, you will be bombarded with a bunch of fun crafts to do. I'm definitely an advocate for using crafts for fine motor activities. They really help a lot. You can also do uh, use toothpicks. So I kind of am a container hoarder. So this is one of my favorite activities. I took an old spice container and some toothpicks and the kids have to put the toothpick right in those little teeny weeny holes. Um, and these kids will sit there and do like 20 toothpicks just because it's such a fun little Focusing activity. Some other containers that I have kept. This is a Tic Tac container and I put beans into it. So the little kids have to put the beans into that tiny little hole using their pincer grass. And I have like coins in a pill container, whatever you want. I also took an old dried out Play-Doh container and I cut a little slit in the top so that kids can put coins into the slit. Another fun little activity. I also have this little container with pom-poms in it and so the kids have to put pom-poms in it. And another little twist that I do with that one is I have this little strawberry stem picker thing and they have to squeeze it to pick up the pom-poms and put them in the container. So this is definitely working on some finger strength as well as bilateral coordination, holding the container with one hand and the strawberry picker with the other hand, or just using your pincer fingers. So I'm a big advocate for stealing containers, I mean, keeping containers out of the garbage and reusing them. So let's talk about pom-poms for a moment. Uh, here I have an O-ball full of pom-poms. So the kids have to like stick their fingers in the holes to grab the pom-poms and then when they're all done they can put them right back in again and poke them in so again this is really encouraging using just those few fingers that we need to talk about I also like to put pom-poms in containers like an ice cube tray or an egg carton because that way they can't use that raking grass that I talked about to pick up the pom-poms they have to stick their fingers individually in the holes to pick pick them up and again they can take them out and put them back in you know they have that age where they just love to take things out and put them back in and this is perfect for that all right one thing that I made with my egg carton that was kind of fun is I took some old um, Easter eggs and put them in this side and I colored the bottom of my egg carton to match the Easter eggs. So I put a whole bunch of empty Easter eggs in the lid and the kids have to find the matching colors and 
snap them together and then put them in the slot that matches the right color. So see how much hand strength I need to shut those? And I only had two so they wouldn't spill all over when I was showing you. Another thing I like to do pom with pom-poms is pom-pom painting. Doo -doo -doo. So you grab the pom-pom with a clothespin and then the little kid has to dip it in the paint and dip it on your paper. Easy peasy. So these are all things that you should have laying around your house. Oh, one more thing, hand strength. Um, squirt bottles are great for hand strength. They have to really use those fingers. I've even seen kids that have to use both hands to squirt this squirt bottle. This one just has water in it, so no worries. And you can have them squirt something on the wall. You can have them squirt the window and like wash the window, right? And um, I, I, I lost my train of thought. <clears throat> okay, on to more hand strength. Tongs. It's really fun if you get a pair of tongs and they have to pick up pom-poms or anything or their toys or whatever with the tongs and they get a kick out of it. So this might not be something that you already have at your house, so I just wanted to show you if you can purchase these tongs. There's plenty of other ones on the market as well. Like I'm not a huge fan of this particular one because they're kind of stiff, but I recommend if you have the means to get some tongs. Um, another thing that you can buy, these are called squigs. Squigs are super fun. Pretty much every occupational therapist that I know has these squigs. And they're little suction cuppy things. And so you stick them to the floor, to the ceiling, to the wall, to the mirror, and then they have to pull them back up. And it takes a lot of effort for these little hands and little arms, whoa, to pull them off the table or the wall or the window. They even kind of stick to each other. And so we've made little roads or little, um, I don't know, obstacle courses for their little cars to go through or stuff like that. So squigs are a super fun, easy activity that kids will play with for hours. And one more thing that you can purchase, uh, puzzles. This is called a two-piece puzzle or like a three-piece puzzle. This is really good for the young kids, like two and three years old. And it's just one of these little things that like, it's just two pieces. You can match, match it by like, if they aren't sure which animal it is, they can match it by the color, they can kind of tell. And one thing I would recommend when doing puzzles and activities like that is to do them laying on the floor, on their belly. This is called laying prone. So when kids are prone, um, up on their elbows. It's really helping their trunk strength and their shoulder strength and their arm strength so that they can be prepared to sit in a chair when they get to school and start writing. So you can do activities and encourage kind of tummy time, only it's like older kid tummy time. So I think I got through my list of fine motor activities that I wanted to show you. I will have other videos on sensory bins, which are so fun, and a gross motor activity um, video that I can help you with other, other things to do with your kids. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.